In this brief video, I'm going to be speaking about the management principles of arthrogryposis. And this material is also present in our arthrogryposis text atlas. It was published by Cambridge University Press that had a British Medical Book Award and is now available for free access in PDF format from our web. So go to globalhelp.org if, if you want to download that. There are many different types of arthrogryposis. And certainly there is a, what, sort of a wastebasket diagnosis with 150 different types. It's described twisted joints in general. And amyoplasia is the most classic form, as shown here in this um, uh, as, uh, work by um, Ribera at the Louvre Museum that shows a classic form. Amyoplasia is characterized by there being, uh, being secondary to fetal immobilization at a critical time during development with muscle hypoplasia, multiple contractures, seeing this in the hands and the feet, and the sensation is intact, fortunately, and there is a normal IQ, so the prognosis for independence and outlook is really excellent. And as you look at the children at different ages, you see they look quite infected at birth, and then they look better as a child, and the older child, they even look better. So time is clearly the friend of the child with amyoplasia. This youngster uh, looked very severe at birth, looked better as a child, and then later on had affected mobility, and she went to Harvard and is now, in a, now a, a successful attorney. So the goal is to have a happy, healthy childhood, to have an adult who is uh, healthy and happy, and has a healthy personality, who's financially independent, and is mobile and integrated into society. There are several different kinds of deformity types in arthrogryposis at birth. And the first type is disruption that occurs early in intrauterine life, like the clubfoot, and you have a deformity that's, that's developed. And then you have a deformation that occurs later on during the intrauterine period. And then following birth, with time and with treatment, there's often improvement in the deformities. But there's always a tendency in arthrogryposis for the deformity to recur, which is uh, continually problematic. The management should be done by age group, and the whole objective is to be optimistic and integrate and look at the whole child in this approach. In the prenatal period, with ultrasound showing the problem, then we try to give information. In the neonatal period, it's important to, to encourage bonding and also giving hope to the family about the outcome. In infancy, we try to correct the deformities with our orthopedic operations. In early childhood, the focus is to maximize function and physical and occupational therapy often help a lot with this. And in childhood, the focus should switch to play, education, and integration. And then finally in the teen years, preparing for vocation and socialization are important considerations. <clears throat> in the neonatal period, there is often f intense family distress. You see the infant with all these problems, and it's been very important to emphasize the good prognosis and how they look better with time. And there's often a lot of guilt. People think, well, I did something wrong, you know, to have an infant like this. And that must be dispelled by, by therapy for the parents if necessary. And the family may try to hide the infant, and that's something to be avoided. And one should be very optimistic for the reasons we've talked about. Now, what is the non-operative management of arthrogryposis? Well, we focus on physical occupational therapy to achieve functional goals, not to correct deformity, but to improve their function and their self-care capability. Provide effective mobility. Promote function with orthotics and with aids. And thoughtful use of these devices to get the child up and about going well. And transition the focus of the management by age group. Talk about that. First of all, we need to maximize function and take advantage of the fact that they have good sensation in their hands, for example. And they have a lot of times, a lot of deformity are able to do much more than one would expect. So that's a great asset. <clears throat> and what they can't do, provide adaptive equipment. And so the child becomes self-care capable. This is very important. And very important is to provide effective mobility. And this is mobility in which the child can initiate the mobility themselves. 
It uh, should be conserving of energy. It's, uh, it also enhances the intellectual and social development. This is proven by Dr. Butler in her research. And contrary to what people used to think, it's not addicting. Kids will not use it if they find that they can get along without it. Braces are important. They should be simple, like this. They should be very lightweight. They should be able to be applied with Velcro straps so the child can take them on and take them off. They should only be part-time. And they can be long or short, depending upon what the child's needs are. The least amount is best. A walker sometimes can be useful during transition from walking to walking from uh, being in a chair in a wheelchair. And then we switch gears as you get into childhood and the teen years. We focus on education, having fun with the child and integrating, and also having socialization and having friends like other children. Now, what are the orthopedic principles per se? Well, first of all, they should be done fairly early, usually in infancy, and combining procedures. And they manage with the least amount of operations. That should be a goal throughout childhood. And try to prevent recurrence with nice splints. If family can, can tolerate this, you can do this to have the capacity for that. And if you do get some recurrence early, try to cast it out like a club foot. There's a recurrence that can often be casted out. And delay operative correction residual form as it can't be casted out or is too old till the end of growth. Don't keep operating over and over again for the child. So what is the sequence of management as we mentioned? Orthopedic procedures during infancy. And then nice splints afterwards prevent recurrence. Braces as necessary. And then a walker at certain times. So what about the timing of procedures specifically for orthopedics. Well, we start off at birth with clubfoot management, Ponsetti casting, and whether you interpose the these uh, percutaneous releases or not, or whatever, choose, uh, then uh, Ponsetti casting can result in, in correction. The next step, uh, later in the first year, is hip open reductions, and knee quad lengthening can often be done concurrently. And they're often done around the age of a year or a little before, a little after. And then the second year, correcting of knee flexion contractures. And then finally, at the end of growth, uh, correct any residual deformity. Not keep operating through this period, but to wait till the end and then do one procedure to correct it. Now the anesthesia is always a problem in these kids because IVs are difficult to place. Intubation may pose a problem, but once asleep, the child can be kept asleep for quite a long time, but relative safety like other children. And this means it's good to combine operations. It reduces the amount of time of immobility because these kids' problems start from immobility, so you don't want to em emphasize that by adding more during childhood. It reduces the anesthetic risk by reducing, of course, the number of anesthetics required. And it's e much easier for the family. And in our experience and others, it really works. And the extent of the procedures is based somewhat upon the speed and the experience of the surgeon. How many can you do at one time? And that's, and that's uh, individual. So an example, this child had hips, knees, and feet done during the same operative setting and the operative casting. And as mentioned, correct residual deformity end of growth. Often the kids will end up in a club foot having a varus deformity with, with uh, prominence over the base of the fifth metatarsal. And put a use an orthotic for this while the child's growing. And then at the end of growth, correct with a bony operation. So I don't keep needing to do over and over again operations. So in review then, in principles, be optimistic, integrate management, and, and apply the whole child approach. In infancy, we correct deformities that cause disability. That's the orthopedic time. Early childhood, we max, do things that maximize function. And in childhood, we focus on play, education, integration. And finally, in the teens, preparing for adult life with vocational planning and preparation and integration. So thank you for watching this video. And if you want to see other material from Global Health Organization, which include video library, PDF downloadable publications and DVD uh, library of all of our publications, go to our website at globalhelp.org. And please send me any comments at staley at uw.edu.